So now in this video, we're going to look at a 555 timer where we're controlling it with a photo diode right there. That's not an LED. It's a photo diode. It's reverse bias. And there's enough light on it to give a low enough uh, voltage to pin four close to zero volts to force the output low because that's what the reset pin does. You give a low input to pin four. It forces the output low and it stays low. You can see the blue LED is lit up. We get it dark enough. Now the uh, 555 timer is not reset anymore. The pull-up resistor raised the reset uh, voltage enough that uh, the 555 timer is not reset. And we have a high output. And we have a high output because pin 2 connected to ground. So it also responds to a low enough uh, voltage. But when it gets a low enough voltage, it sets the output high. It's just less powerful than the reset pin. Something that you always need to be aware of. So now we're going to do a step-by-step -step build, and there's not uh, too much to this. Most of it's already on the board. So we got the positive supply to pin 8, the negative supply to pin 1. That's how you power it. That's how you get the internal 1 -third and 2 -third supply voltage, but we're not really using that uh, in this uh, video right there. We have the trigger pin, pin number 2 right there. Uh, little jumper bringing it up to ground right there. I'm kind of running out of uh, gray jumpers right there. I lost a number of them. Um, so in any case, we have... Uh, connection to ground and therefore it's going to have a low input. I removed the uh, power supply and I turned it off as well while we are wiring this up. Now we also have a uh, pin number six here. So that's the threshold pin. It's waiting for two thirds or higher supply voltage before it sets the output low but we don't want it to do that at all. So that's above two thirds supply voltage. We're connected to ground. That's way below two thirds supply voltage. It disables uh, pin six right there. So be aware that if you put uh, pin four directly to positive supply and nothing else, that disables it. Pin six you disable by putting directly to the negative supply. Something to always be aware of. Now we are going to uh, use the reset pin in uh, this video. So before we do that though, let's get to the output because it's uh, the loads that we're going to light are higher up. LEDs. Um, load is our load right there. That's why I said load. They're LEDs though. So I didn't get them confused. I just want to make that clear. Our load is the LEDs. So we have the output pin number three right there. So blue LEDs, I like to light up when the output's low connected to ground. That means the other side of the LED has to go to the positive supply. So of course the long lead, the anode has to be more positive when it lights up. Short lead, the cathode, more negative. So we're going to put the long lead, the anode, directly to the positive supply right there. Um, there you can see it's closer to positive supply. Resistor is in between it, but we're going to swap the positions of these two components right there. So 1000 ohm resistor, blue LEDs are pretty bright, and we get a pretty good connection to ground right there. And uh, so we just need a little bit of uh, current right there. 1000 ohm resistor will do uh, just fine. And uh, now we're going to look at the uh, red LED. So it lights up when the output is high, as close to the positive supply as it can get. And again, we're going to swap the two positions right there. So we got uh, the red LED. Now the line lead, the anode, goes to the output pin 3. But I'm going to put it up one spot right below it. We got uh, pin number 1 there, negative supply uh, for the uh, 555 timer. But it's the negative rail right there. That's the main thing. So right above it, we got the long lead, the anode. We can take a 220 ohm resistor right there and um, plug that into the output and then up to the long lead, the anode of the red LED. If you have an LED that's not lighting up, maybe it got put in backwards um, if it's not lighting up when it uh, is supposed to. Always be aware that that's a common mistake. Now, we have our output taken care of. We have our direct to supply rail connections all taken care of. We're just going to come to the photodiode uh, part of it, right there, the reset pin I should say. So we got two components that uh, are going to be going from the reset pin to uh, something else. So we have the photodiode. Again, you got to use it reverse bias. If you put it in uh, forward bias, the long lead, the anode towards positive, short lead, the cathode towards negative, uh, nothing's going to happen. So um, we want to put it uh, so that it's uh, reversed by a short lead cathode will be towards the more positive side of the circuit. Long lead the anode down there. So it actually takes away signal from the pull up uh, resistor when we get enough light on it. So right now there's nowhere for it to go 
and uh, so when I plug in this uh, 100,000 ohm resistor and this will determine sensitivity a bit um, but for the most part the photodiode conducts really well under bright light and not well at all when it is dark um, so the value of the resistor is not crucial I made this a long time ago um, I probably tried 10k and didn't like the results and did 100k so again you know there's adjustability there but uh, I can't speak for how much difference it will make at the moment now as I said before I'm uh, running low on uh, gray jumpers right there I uh, dropped them somewhere or misplaced them some other way and uh, so I got uh, some of these black uh, jumpers that I make commonly I use them to bridge the gap between um, the pin number two and pin number six sometimes they're connected directly together when you got like a stable uh, circuits but here instead I'm going to use it to bring the photo down to the negative supply right there and thanks to how long it is I can kind of get it out of the way too I don't have to put it up there where it's kind of blocking stuff a little bit more um but yeah that should be it we should be completely wired up I can't think of anything I missed and pretty sure I got everything done right so we will bring the uh, power supply over and uh, so I got it set to 5 volts a maximum of uh, 20 milliamps of current just because we're working with LEDs and I don't want to blow them and um, so if I miswire something so as long as everything's wired right we shouldn't even get that close to 20 milliamps but there again we got it bright enough again because uh, I showed this at the beginning of the video we got it uh, bright enough where we have a low output the reset pin is forcing the output low and as long as I didn't screw anything up we get it dark enough now the output goes high so now we will grab the multimeter and uh, do some measurements we're gonna measure voltage set the meter to V that's all I got to do if I want to measure AC I got to make a change but otherwise that's all I got to do is uh, set the meter to V because it's auto ranging red probe doesn't move for anything other than high current above about uh, 0.6 amps of current 600 milliamps of current anything above that you got to set the meter to that setting um, if you measure more current than what it's set to it can blow a fuse in fact I'm pretty sure the fuse is blown right now and um, just never got around to uh, wanting to replace it uh, so far and uh, pretty sure I haven't tried to measure high current in a while but in any case I uh, got these alligator clips right there I can clip to the probe and uh, I just crimped with pliers the uh, metal part of the alligator clips to the other end of a jumper there it's a uh, male to a uh, male so first let's look at uh, of course the the most important one the one that's probably hardest to understand the voltage to the reset pin right there so it's got to be really close to zero volts so I remember it wasn't too long ago I uh, measured where the change was and uh, we're gonna kind of do that again today so I was surprised how close you had to be to zero volts that's one reason why we have such a high value pull-up uh, resistor but there you can see it took um, looks like maybe 0.5 volts now that I'm uh, seeing that I am remembering that's about where we had it there and I'm thinking this is probably like the LED is kind of flickering and so I don't have probably an exact light falling on it at any uh, given time there's probably some flickering where it just goes up and down slightly so they're both probably alternating pretty quick they probably weren't both on at the same time but there you can see somewhere about uh, 0.5 volts is uh, where we have our switch right there and if I get it dark you know it's really easy to see how high you can get up in voltage right there so when it's dark the photodiode barely passes any current when it's bright it will pass a lot of current and um, therefore our pull-up uh, resistor whatever current can get through it will get sucked right to ground but when it's not conducting very well just barely conducting then even a hundred thousand ohm resistor can bring in uh, more current than what it's going to let flow through and that gives you a high input to the reset pin and remember reset pin forces the output low when it has a low enough voltage enough light falling on the photo down in this case then it forces the output low now pin number two is going to be basically uh, five or zero volts that's right we have a low input uh, there I had this backwards for a minute a low input tells him uh, pin number two to set the output high so that's not changing at all that's a uh, relatively fixed voltage although um, with different current flow and stuff it may this is just uh, 0.01 volts 
one percent of a volt right there very low but uh, that's probably resistance in the board that is showing up based on um, different uh, current flows and stuff so always be aware that there's that to address but um, there you could see we had uh, that so what I mean by that if I go right to the positive rail and right to the negative rail right by where um, the alligator clips are there you can see we got 4.974 volts and um, I could you know probably touch the alligator clips and get an even more accurate measurement but um, you know that was uh, good enough so 4.98 now I'm gonna cross go across the board because uh, that comes to that jumper it comes over there and over to there we got some extra stuff in the way and there you can see 4.967 we lost a little bit of voltage at the supply rails so even if you got something connected directly to the supply rails there it went up a little bit because I'm closer to the alligator clips you can get a slight voltage difference by about a 0 0.01 volt is uh, you know not unheard of and there I just bumped the power supply screw things up even more so always be aware of that now we have uh, the uh, we just took uh, the trigger pin voltage which is basically zero volts at all times way below one-third of the supply voltage um, what is that like 1.6 volts I think or 1.3 volts um, way below that at all times because it's directly to a rail and uh, now we're gonna go to the output so output is low now we have a really good connection to ground you know not perfect again there's uh, transistors and stuff that it's going through in the integrated circuit so even though if it's technically a perfect connection to ground there's a uh, impedance along the way impedance just means opposition to current flow uh, you know maybe very very small amount of opposition but there you can see we're getting very close to the uh, ground connection I'll go to uh, right above uh, where that jumper is going to the rail there you can see we got you know very close to that and um, in the grand scheme of things remember that's one volt over there this is all just a very small amount of voltage now we're gonna set the output high make it darker right there more complex and that's uh, kind of what you expect you expect uh, lighting an LED like this probably gonna fall about a volt and a half short of the supply voltage approximately so I say well lighting an LED because I'm gonna remove the LED now we got that resistor but the outputs coming to a dead end it's not passing any current you can see it's a little bit higher right there so you know not a ton higher but uh, the LED is making a difference when it has to provide voltage and uh, we will go back uh, or here's the outputs low and again we can do the same thing with the blue LED and uh, I wanted to pluck it without changing the output and there you can see much better connection to ground because it's not going through the blue LED so there's that to deal with as well make sure I put it back in the right way the load so you get a real real good connection to ground with uh, no load no blue LED in this case right there but even this isn't too bad makes a pretty good connection to ground not so good connection to the positive supply it can provide quite a bit of power though um, without the voltage dropping a whole much whole bunch more than this so um, I'm going on and on about this because it's important you understand the limitations of components and circuits first off you got to learn um, their basic uses and everything keep that as simple as possible but once you have their basic uses down then start looking at their limitations as well that's very important it's very easy to design a circuit assuming that the components will be uh, perfect and uh, and then it doesn't work just because you got to make slight modifications to overcome their limitations so I'm going to disconnect the uh, multimeter measuring voltage is pretty safe um if it comes to a current make sure you uh, disconnect it from the circuit as soon as possible usually you're just holding it, the probes with your hands but I don't want to do that because pushing on the components uh, messes up uh, your your reading too because it changes the uh, how well it's connecting remember just having connections in the breadboard adds a little bit of impedance right there it gets worse if you start pushing probes on stuff but again usually you can take a good enough measurement you don't have to make uh, these you know um, you can push on them just be careful just realize too when you push on them likely it's uh, altering the measurement you're getting but in any case again made this really long I kind of intended it for absolute beginners 
So hopefully it was helpful that it was longer instead of a quick uh, short video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.